But what we are gonna talk about is how someone doesn't understand how to do a transaction. They don't understand what an appraisal is. They don't understand what inspections are. They don't understand what debt means. They don't understand what the terms I just talked about are. But they also think that they're gonna jump right in and go buy a 50 unit complex or a 10, $20 million complex or mobile home park. And it doesn't make any sense. You guys have to learn to walk, learn to crawl, then learn to walk, then you can start running. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to the YouTube channel. I'm Austin Hancock. I have large eight figure portfolio of single family, some small multifamily and some commercial in Oklahoma. I'm currently right here in sunny San Diego. Uh, we will start doing deals here in San Diego next year, 2025. So if you got deals, you want to send them to me, you know, connect in the right down in the description below. I want to thank you guys for being here. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about I get a lot of calls of people that uh, want to get into multifamily. They want to get into storage units. They want to get into mobile home parks and a lot of these bigger deals. And, and I understand it and I think it's great. And I'm going to take these glasses off so I can look at you guys directly in the eye. It's that those vehicles can get you to, to a massive level. And they are scalable and they're growable. And you hear people like, oh, I can raise money at the beginning. And I thought that way too. I was reading the multifamily books. I was like listening to Grant Cardone and, and I was like, I should just start. I should just start with a 50 unit complex. But not a lot of people are telling you. And the truth is, is that in order to get a 50 unit complex, the debt is different. So if you're gonna go get a loan, which I assume you're going to if you're just starting out in real estate, or you're gonna go raise capital, you need to know the terms. And so when you go get a loan on a 50 unit, 30 unit, 150 unit complex, whether it's a mobile, home park, whether it's a storage unit, whether it's a multifamily, it doesn't matter. The debt is different and the way that it's appraised is different. It's based off of an NOI, a net operating income. Hey, what's up guys? Austin Hancock here. I get a lot of messages asking for some help in some capacity, whether it's financial, fitness, mindset, something to make your life better, something to make it to where you can go from this point right here, where you are now, to the dream life that you've always wanted to be living. Shoot me a text or give me a call. 405-697-4072. The number's right here. 405 405- 697-4072. Call or text the number and let's change your life. And when it's based off of a net operating income, that's good for you. And when it's sold, it's sold on a cap rate. And that's good. But we're not going to dive into those terms today. But what we are going to talk about is how someone doesn't understand how to do a transaction. They don't understand what an appraisal is. They don't understand what inspections are. They don't understand what debt means. They don't understand what the terms I just talked about are. But they also think that they're going to jump right in, go buy a 50 unit complex or a 10, $20 million complex or or mobile home park. And it doesn't make any sense. You guys have to learn to walk, learn to crawl, then learn to walk, then you can start running. I know investors that don't ever choose to change asset classes. They start in single family, which is what I'm suggesting with you. And one of the reasons that I always suggest people start in single family, at least get their feet wet. If you do a whole year of it and you're like, dude, I know I can take this to the moon. I got an uncle with money. I got this, I got these things. I got, I can do all this stuff. Sure, but at least start in single family because what that allows you to do is to build up a little bit of a reputation it allows you to do is get a little bit callous and with a lot less risk, right? Everybody here that's watching this video lives in a piece of real estate. Whether it is a multifamily, whether it is, you are renting, whether you are owning, doesn't really matter. Everybody lays their head down in a piece of real estate, except for unfortunately some people downtown that live outside. But the reality is the majority of people in the United States live in a piece of real estate, but the majority of the people in the United States live in what type of piece of real estate? Single family home. And so you have a volume of people that can purchase these properties, whether it's through FHA loans, whether it's through VA loans, whether it's through mortgages or even conventional style or commercial loan. There's a lot of options and you're more liquid, meaning it's more sellable. It's, it's easier to get rid of. We all went through COVID. We all went through 2020. And what happened to office space? Everybody went home and all these buildings went vacant. And what did companies start to realize? Companies started to realize that they may not need all this office space and that they can work some people hybrid. They can downsize the lease in every location across the United States if they're a chain company. And it saves them on their bottom line a massive amount of money, right? They can set up everybody on a mobile. They can do all these things. Now, there's pros and cons to that, and I'm not here to argue whether it's good or not for their business, but what I am telling you, we saw a dip in office space. We saw that people needed to take office space and that they needed to reutilize it for something else, right? Because it wasn't being used. It was vacant. And now we have these people that have leases that are like, dude, I don't need this lease anymore. I can't even send anybody to the office. And so what happens to office space is that we've had, we have so much now, we have an abundance of it that it's hurt, that that asset class is hurting, right? But what happens to single family? 
You know, even if you're an investor and your objective is to flip a home, a lot of times the end buyer is buying it personally. And if you're in the affordable housing range, which is what I teach and what I show, is that you guys can sell those properties to people that are just happy to have a home. They're first time home buyers. Maybe they're just moving from state to state and they need to get somewhere affordable at first, right? Like I said, first time home buyers. And these people are happy to have a house that you just redid in a neighborhood that they now can afford. And this is a huge problem because we have a massive problem in the United States with affordable housing. And so when you start to do affordable housing and in some cases affordable housing is not a shack it's not a freaking slumlord right like you may get that label it's not a slumlord no no not all the time that depends on how you manage it but what it is is it is an asset class to where if everybody does have an economic crisis people shift think of it as a pyramid you got the one percent on the top you have the the poorest people at the bottom that own property if we have an economic collapse where we have a 2008 everybody has to shift down to a different asset class they have to shift down to a different tier right you went from middle class to lower middle class you went from upper middle class to regular middle class maybe you went from the wealthy or the one percent you had to shift down because your industry got smoked you know you lost your job or something right and so when you shift down to these asset classes if you're the one at the bottom of the pyramid then you have people coming always going down to your asset class right and so when you have that that means you have an abundance of people and unfortunately in the United States right now we have an affordable housing crisis and they have stopped building homes to the volume that they used to build in 2008 right so 2008 after we had the crash and I was young I was I was in the military I didn't even own a home I actually ended up buying one right after that 21 years old because I had saved my money in the military and then turned around and got a VA loan. I don't recommend that. I'm just explaining it. So they haven't built these homes in volumes since 2008. And so since 2008, every year we have shorter and shorter and shorter inventory of, of assets, of affordable housing. And now we have people that are also not only fighting to buy a home, getting out of college or growing older and becoming new first time home buyers, skipping off and hoping to live this American dream that we've been sold. Now we have people that are doing VRBOs. Now we have hedge funds that are taking down property I won't even get into that but you're competing with so many other things to buy a property and now we have inflation and they tried to slow inflation with high interest rates but it hasn't worked why because we still don't have enough inventory and when you have simple supply and demand economics you don't have enough inventory the price of the inventory stays where it is or goes up it's just how it works and you guys are like well they're gonna build more houses well no you're not not gonna build more houses you can do that because you can turn over a home and flip a house or flip it into a rental as fast as 30 to 60 days you know well you could also build them yes you can but it will take you more like six months to nine months for a small one so when you have this lower tier asset Asset class that people move into then you have an abundance of, of solutions for it right and that's why I want to challenge you guys to think like why do I want to get into multifamily and why am I so arrogant that I think that I can go off and get into these large assets I can go buy 50 million dollars worth of property because the guy online said it's easier to buy 50 million dollars but you can't even figure out the terms you can't even finish the book that you started on multifamily you technically could be easier with the person that has the knowledge already with the person that has the ability to get the capital could it technically be easier sure but those two hurdles those two hurdles right there knowledge and capital isn't that most people's hurdles isn't that most people's problems when they're getting into real estate or getting into a business yeah so let's go gain the knowledge and so start building up our capital and you choose to if you choose to move asset classes or just gain some more like most people right I said I have some some small multifamily you know if I wanted to now I have a large portfolio of single family as well and I could easily sell some of those off get some more multi or even just with my connections and capital raising abilities and, and understanding of real estate I could go get multifamily right now you know and grow that and continue to go that's not my motive at the moment it could be though I have the ability but why do I have the ability I have the ability because I understand the concept from single family because I had to start I had to take down a house to flip it I had to understand how this works how a title company works how a lender lends how much money does this take what are the pitfalls and it's a lot easier to learn that on affordable houses at the beginning when you're trying to just get one leg forward after the next than it is to be like oh well we we made a mistake and we lost all of our investors money on this 50 million dollar deal because we we needed to learn some lessons it ain't gonna work it ain't gonna work for most people you guys unless you have a private equity grandpa or you have somebody that has stupid money that just wants to teach you help you learn most of us don't have that so your best bet is to start in a single family and take the first step start to learn understand the principles show that you have discipline follow through build up some relationships build up a little bit of an asset pool right one two three four five twenty houses you know start getting some reps in just like the gym start getting some reps and you don't skip to go bench 500 pounds right or squat 500 pounds no you don't because you had to start the same concept with real estate so hope you guys enjoyed the video listen subscribe hit the like button and there's some links down in the bio below if you guys are interested in learning how I show you guys how to get into real estate where we have the potential
able to fix and flip it, make a lump sum of money. Oh, we have a contingency plan because we couldn't sell it. Boom, we turn it into a rental. Boom, that contingency plan doesn't work or we don't want to rent this property out because of the area. Boom, we can sell or finance it. This is the contingency plan. What I set up for you guys in my inner circle and I show you exactly how you can do this and mitigate all the risk that goes along with real estate through knowledge and action. So hit the link below. Thanks for watching the video. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side.